My Uncle Trevor always used to say, Once a cop, always a cop. Little did he know how true that would be, and how one last case would change his life forever. After he retired from the force, my uncle took a security guard job at an abandoned hospital that was scheduled to be demolished. The local paper had published an article on its history, so the property owners wanted some security on site, just in case curious people decided to sneak in to steal souvenirs or wreck the place for fun. And after being a cop for over 30 years, Uncle Trevor thought that this was easy money. The hospital was a mess, but not stripped bare. There were still beds and chairs, still a hint of what the place used to be years ago. Uncle Trevor staked out a comfy little spot by the service door. He brought his lunchbox, a newspaper, and a small battery-operated radio to keep him company on those long, quiet nights. It wasn't always quiet, though. He kicked out some guy creeping around the premises his first night there, but other than that, it was smooth sailing. Until his last night on the job. The demolition was set for the morning, so the job was almost over. That night started like it usually did for Uncle Trevor. He made the rounds, checked all the rooms, secured the chains on the entrances. Pretty uneventful. Until he suddenly heard a strange sound echoing in the hallways. The sound of a little girl crying. Now you have to understand, this hospital was in the middle of nowhere, 30 miles from the nearest house and surrounded by a thick forest of trees. No child should be anywhere near this place, especially in the middle of the night. <laughs> Uncle Trevor decided to follow the sound expecting just to find wind howling through a broken window. That's when he saw her, a little girl standing in the hallway. Uncle Trevor wasn't the type to get spooked. Like I said, he was an ex-cop. My mom told me he never believed in ghosts and the supernatural, not even when they were little kids. It had to be a young girl who got trapped inside the building. How exactly that happened wasn't Uncle Trevor's main concern. He needed to find her quickly before the building came down in the morning. Something odd was starting to creep my uncle out, though. He would chase the girl into a room, thinking he could finally catch up to her. And she'd be gone. The room would be empty. <laughs> and then she would just pop up somewhere else. Almost magically. Very weird. He followed the girl down to the morgue, and that's when he discovered something that shook him to his core. A 
small pile of bones sitting in an empty body drawer. My uncle says he'll never forget the unsettling feeling that washed over him. For the first time in his life, he believed in the possibility of ghosts. He immediately called his buddies in the force, who carefully collected the bones. He didn't mention chasing a phantom little girl through the building, afraid they would think retirement had made him crazy. The hospital was eventually demolished in a big explosion, leaving just a mountain of rubble. Uncle Trevor didn't really like to talk about that night, until he watched a news report on TV several months later. The bones were identified as belonging to a local 12-year-old girl who had disappeared 10 years ago. She had been kidnapped by a man who had just been arrested. The news showed both the photo of the girl and her killer on the TV screen. A chill ran down my uncle's spine. The little girl was the same from that night, and the photo of the killer was of the man that he had kicked off the hospital premises that first night on the job. Thanks to my Uncle Trevor, the girl's bones weren't destroyed in the blast that brought down the hospital, lost forever, clearly as her killer had hoped. The little girl had a proper burial, and the killer is spending the rest of his life in prison. Uncle Trevor has a million stories from his days as a cop, but it was his last case and the little girl who got justice from beyond the grave that stays with him to this very day. <laughs>